Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 79. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 200 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Something. Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Wow, what, what a weekend. Is this? We just finished, well, we finished live streaming, but before that, we finished emceeing or hosting, whatever you want to call it, the first ever Proper Human Diet Virtual Summit put on by the Berries. What an honor. Like, I am still blown away at just the privilege of getting to participate in that and how exciting was it to see so many people in all of the different rooms just taking in all of this knowledge for the from all of those incredible speakers. Yeah, it was an amazing experience. And I will say this, it has rejuvenated me. Yeah. I mean, I went into it. I've heard some of those talks or some of those speakers. We've met a few of them. Most of the time we go to the conferences, though, we're out like wanting to meet you guys. And we watch the talks later. So it was nice to see the talks while they were in going life. on. And it's just rejuvenating me. I mean, I put my CGM back in so I can start monitoring things again. Yeah. Kim Howerton has got me renewed and rejuvenated to start eating like liver. Thanks a lot, and Kim. And different organ meats. I'm super excited about that. Not excited about that. But it was just so amazing. But I know we already did this, but I need to do it again. I want to say thank you to Dr. Barry and to Nisha for allowing us to MC that event and and for them to put their faith in us because they didn't know what they were going to get. They could have gotten Rachel saying balls a whole bunch of times. We literally have crazy in our name. Right. And it was amazing. So we want to say thank you to them. I mean, they are just awesome people. They really are. And they care. They care. They want That's you the to be thing. well. They care. But it was just awesome. I have a couple of housekeeping things though. Okay. Okay. First of all, we're going to tell you guys right now, not this Thursday, but... Shh, are we allowed to say it? Yes, I can say it because it's on my calendar okay. and then it's going to commit him. But not this Thursday, but next Thursday, I believe the date is the 24th. You don't even have to say the name. You can just point to the picture. Dr. Barry is going to come on our live stream. He's going to come on our live stream and we're going to talk about this. And he's going to answer questions, but we're going to talk about... Why did he help develop this? What is the purpose of it? What can we do with it? Why do we need it? So make sure you mark your calendars because it's going to be on our live stream. Flavor of the week that Keto Chad this week is what we've been eating for the last two days as part of our dinner because we haven't been eating until after the summit is over each day. Yeah. So we've been eating a lot of like ground Thank you, beef keto and hamburg. And then we've been having a keto chow because quick. we're eating everything together. Raspberry cheesecake. I did not think that I would love that flavor as much as I do, but raspberry cheesecake is just like the perfect combination of like the cheesecake and tartness flavor. Yep. So raspberry cheesecake is going to be on sale 10% off. If you use our link down below, you get another 10% off. And here's something that we discovered last night. Rachel does not like the berry flavored cereal school. I, I really don't. You all know we like to put cereal school on top of our ice cream because it's very low carb and pretty clean ingredients. I just don't like that one flavor. But it goes really well with raspberry cheesecake because it's like similar flavor profiles. It does. But, but to me, like separated from it, that particular flavor, like it. it tastes medicine-y to me. Okay. It's like penicillin. Are you ready for the other one? The yes. announcement that we get to make because I have been I'm bugging so them happy. and bugging them and bugging them. And I must have messaged Julie like 20 times sorry, in the last Julie. month. I can't. And I asked her yesterday. Can't deal with him. But guess what? Is back. Is back. The seasoning salt. Redmond seasoned salt. Now, one thing. It's only available right now. In the big container. Yeah. I'm going to tell you to buy the big container anyway. But You're going to be upset if you don't buy the big container because this stuff is, I'm telling you, there is no chicken in this. There is not one lick of chicken in this. But if you're like, what is the best chicken broth? Like yep. if you're, you're like, I just want to drink a, a hot beverage. I'm not a coffee person. I'm not a, you know, hot tea person. 
this stuff is amazing and you you will swear there is chicken in there. So if you're interested in the seasoned salt, use our link down below. You can use the code 2 Crazy Ketos. That's gonna get you 20% off of your purchase. They do have the small containers coming in. They're just not in yet. And uh, the big one container is in. So go get the big containers. Get I don't it. remember how much they are. It's gonna you can sell see, out. We use this stuff a lot. I know a lot of people are waiting for it. And Julie told me about it over the weekend and she's like, go ahead and tell people on Keto on the Couch. So super, super excited about that. We have that. been rationing it out. Like you can't even believe, like we are in a zombie apocalypse because Joe is like, if he sees, cause the kids love it too. Right. If he sees Anthony like seasoning chicken to like go grill Get it. Get off like, my seasoning salt. He's like, give me that, put that down. Yeah. <laughs> put that down right now. Okay. You wanted to show something because not only did we have this, but in the midst of all of this, we went back to church this week. And at least Rachel did. I stayed home for the summit, but Rachel went back. I went back to church. It was our first weekend in like a brick and mortar situation. And I always say all the time, do not wait to like go full force on your health goals until everything is perfectly happening. Right. Because it's never gonna happen. There's always going to be some obstacle, some hiccup that's going to stop you. So like we say all the time, take it one day at a time, one choice at a time and handle it. So we went back to church, every single thing <laughs> that could have gone wrong. We had our registration to like Check in the kids went 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 terrible, went south. We had all of these plans because you're trying to to get people out and social distance at the same time. We had a torrential downpour. So now everybody's clogged up at the end of the kids' hallway. But what are you gonna do? Stick your foot out and be like, get out. Like right. there's a hurricane outside, but you but we have to social distance. That was challenging. All every type of electronic TVs were going down. We just kept persevering. But I started cackling when I saw this. This was outside of the kids' check-in area on top of the welcome home sign. A giant hawk is right next to the line where kids are queuing in to come in the building as if to say like, sure, check in. Maybe I'm gonna eat your kid's face off. Possibly I'm going to cart your new baby away. But it was like, we're doing this in spite of circumstances. Right? right? We're doing this in spite of it. And it was great. I loved it so much. I can't even tell you how many new babies I met that were born during the quarantine period. So like the last time I saw the family, no baby. Now I'm seeing a family, it's six months old. I, I'm really interested to see the babies that we start getting in three more months. So many because babies. Because there's a joke down here, whenever we have a hurricane, like all of a sudden nine months later, tons of babies are popping out. How many babies are gonna be popping babies? out over the next like, you know, year? It's gonna be amazing. Let's talk about our food real quick because we have a long Keto on the Couch. We're gonna try to keep it short. Yes. But a lot of questions, again, Keto on the Couch it's all about our subscribers, a little bit about what we're doing, but mostly about you guys. We wanna answer questions. We wanna like share some stories. So this week, busy week, we went camping for Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. This is on top of the 17 inch black stone. I know it's kind of hard to see, but we were eating some shrimp, steak, chicken, peppers and onions, and now white stuff. That is the poor man's halloumi cheese. Can you please, expound on that because I am telling you, this thing was a game changer for us. I had no idea I was not eating halloumi. We love halloumi cheese, but let's face it. Halloumi cheese is a seasonal cheese and it's only available a couple months out of the year. And even when you can find it, it's, it's expensive. expensive. It's like eight, $9 for a little tiny block. That is queso cheese. Bought it in Walmart, $3 for a giant block. And it fries up. Fries up just like halloumi, tastes just as good. Who knew? So that's a little trick for you. Then after that, one more thing. This was our meal after I think night one of the summit. Like, cause what else are you going to eat? After, the after proper a human proper diet. human diet summit was a lot. Well, this may have even been last night. I don't even remember. A lot of ground beef, some fried salami, and then we had one of those Costco sausages that we had on top of that. So that's all of our food for the week. Uh, we're gonna go in, actually jump right into the segment for Keto College. We're gonna take a quick commercial break because if I don't take one, then they YouTube's one. gonna make you take one anyway. So give us one second. Welcome back. Okay, so this week, Keto College. Our adjunct professor. Our adjunct professor. 
We're not going to pick one from our Facebook family group. This week's adjunct professor is just going to be Team Barry. Yep. Like the entire Barry team. Angela, who helped put on that entire thing. Dr. Yes. Barry, Misha, Kim Howerton, all of the speakers. Team Barry is the adjunct professor of the week because the information that they put out there for over 3,000 people was amazing. And the fact that they're going to make it available to everybody else you know, within the next couple months is awesome. So that's who we're going to make the adjunct professor of the week. They're just incredible people. Go sign up for their Facebooks. Yes. Go join their YouTube channels. Go you know, read their books because you're going to learn so much information and fix your diet. What you didn't see, if even if you were attending the summit, was like the pre-stuff, like where you're waiting before they open up the rooms to everybody. And every single time without fail, that entire team was talking together and they were so excited about getting people healthy. Yeah. Every single speaker was like, we're going to get people healthy. That's right. Man, we are going to like change some lives. Like people are going to have a, a longevity to their life because, because we're doing this. They were so pumped to help people that, yeah, I mean, we were moved to tears that we were like, we need to pull this together before like they open the room because we're going to be crying as they start. But they, this whole team is committed to seeing people get healthy. And Angela and Amanda, who were behind the scenes, who nobody saw, yeah. who were running the whole conference, who they were up until two, three, four o'clock in the morning, slept. changing stuff, putting things in because some people were having technical problems. Mostly it was user error, trying to make sure everybody had a perfect experience. They were awesome, Amazing. constantly changing. Hey, we need to add this. Can you talk about this? So without them, nothing would have happened. So the entire team, Barry, that's this week's um, you know adjunct professors of the week. Now, we do have some stories we want to share, some like non-scale victories. If you're new to our channel, I know there's some new people watching us right now. Hi. This is the part of the program where we like to share and celebrate you guys. So we always say all the time that please share your story because your story is going to impact somebody. Absolutely. There is somebody out there right now who is going through what you went through and they think they're alone. Mm -hmm. And when you share your story, they're going to be like, oh. Somebody else I'm knows what this is like. So please share your stories. Go and join our Facebook group. If you don't have Facebook, you can send us your story at stories at twocrazyketos.com. So ready? First thing up, I think, is a non-scale victory. Paula wrote... Hey, Paula. Conversation with my husband as I was getting dressed for work this morning. Me. I think I'm going to try these pants on and see how they fit. Husband. As I'm pulling them on and up, don't you think you should unbutton them? Pants pull on easily with no resistance. What? Husband, well, okay then. Congratulations. We laugh, but I think mine were more laughter of pure wow. joy that I didn't even have to unbutton them to get them on. Paula. On to the next pair of skinny pants. Good for you, girl. I love that. Is that awesome? That is that is like the best non-scale victory I have heard lately. <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of things to celebrate, but the fact that you didn't even have to unbutton your pants. That makes you feel good. We were actually joking like at church where, you know, some people were running late and we were saying like, you know, what happened? Like running late and it was like, I have not had regular pants on in five months. So you sort of just take for granted, like when you're getting ready to go someplace, that whatever's in the closet, you can just put on. Well, guess what? If you haven't put them on for a while and like, you know, I'm gonna quarantine give you a, happened. I'm going to give you another good non-scale victory. When you can pull them off without unbuttoning. Oh, yes. You know or I mean? without help. As you're walking, like I was walking through Walmart last week and I didn't have a belt on. And Rachel's like, will you pull your pants up? I'm like, Please. what? She's like, they're falling down like below your hips. Pull your pants up. But it's so like. But that's awesome, right? You're like, pants are falling I'm going to show it. Okay, next up. We have Laylee. I hope I'm not butchering that. Hey, Laylee. She said, non-scale victory today. I was able to comfortably wear my wedding rings again. Wow. I stopped wearing them in April after COVID stress hit me hard and I put a lot of weight on. Went back to keto at the end of June and have lost nearly 10% of my highest weight ever. I never want to see those numbers again. Congratulations. That is awesome. What I love hearing is I went ahead and went on it again. So maybe like if you've had a period of time where you're like, man, the stress has really gotten to me and I really need a reboot. I need to restart. That is okay. Mm -hmm. It's not like if it's one and done. I needed, I'm right now on keto 2.0. 
Me too. I had to redo it again and right. restart it. Now we're like in a three year stretch and that is awesome. But like, yeah, you get to restart again. Sometimes you need to reboot. Hey, it happened to us in the middle of the, you know, summer this weekend, Rachel left. Of course, Rachel left, everything goes wrong because like she's, I can't function without Rachel. But she left. That's nice. All of a sudden, my computer needs a reboot. And I started thinking, boy, it's kind of like our body, right? Sometimes you just need a reboot. And it's okay to take that. Yeah. Next one, we have our subscriber of the week. It's a little long, so I just kind of wrote it down. And I'm going to read it. It's from Pat. Hey, Pat. Pat said, I have never dreamed I would still be eating this way two years later and writing a success story. Like so many, I tried so many diets in the past that were not sustainable. I honestly didn't have a ton of hope. I went into this hoping and praying to maybe lose 15 pounds. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would lose more than 40 pounds. Wow. This was actually my second attempt at keto and I actually gained the first time. I was doing it all wrong. I didn't even understand yet what a macro was. After watching several Dr. Barry and Dr. Berg videos, I knew I had to figure out how to make this work for me. I kept watching videos about stubborn metabolisms. I came across videos from two fit docs. They talked about their zero, one, two, three strategy, zero sugar, one large salad, two, cooked, two cups of cooked veggies, and don't eat three hours before bed. That was easy enough. I gave it a try, it started working immediately, and I was finally on my way with a formula that would work for me. Then of course, I found two crazy ketos, Yay! my keto family. I am a carb addict. I will always be a carb addict. Me too. In fact, even with two years of practice under my belt and the proper human diet summit going on, I struggled today. Long story, but stress got the best of me. Ice cream has been my drug of choice, and though today it was Halo Top rather than a thing of Briars, I have to share this to let people know I'm improving, but I am not perfect, and you don't have to be perfect to keep making progress. I know I always have a, I now I know to always have a serving of keto chow ice cream in the freezer, but I didn't today. I like to get a healthy BMI, which is about 11 pounds away, and my body just doesn't seem to want me to let me get there. That's okay though. I'm proud of how far I've come and I will always eat like this. I hope to be motivated by the PhD Summit to dial the carbs down lower and see if it helps. Just a few of the never ending list of non-scale victories. I rarely have joint pain. There is no more ankle swelling. Wow. I used to have a horrible itching on the bottoms of my feet that would wake me up in the middle of the night. It would kind of feel like burning pins and needles. It was maddening. I used to have at least two migraines a week. I can't remember the last time I had a headache that didn't go away with salt. The brain fog was awful. My hunger was out of control. I may still want to eat more than I should, but I can, I can control it now. I used to sneak eat sweets because I was embarrassed by how much I was eating. And I used to have to attend very unhelpful health coaching at work because I had all the markers for metabolic disease. Looking back, boy, did I ever have the markers. My markers were good enough that this year I didn't have to attend coaching. That is so awesome. Do you want to see her pictures? Yes, please. Look at that. Look oh at that. Oh my gosh, you look amazing. Look like a different person. Absolutely amazing. Holding that baby. The baby's I, bigger than you, I the think. The, it's amazing, right? Amazing. The biggest victory, because there are a lot of non-scale victories, yep. all in, in her message. The biggest one to me was, I haven't given up. Yep. I haven't given up. I may not be perfect. Nobody is perfect. If you're waiting to do this perfect, like it's just not going to happen. I don't want to upset you, but it's just not going to happen. Like you're going to mess up. I mess up. You mess up. We mess up. We fall short of our health plans. Yep. You haven't given up. That is the victory. That is the greatest victory. That's I right. love that. And the fact that you are vulnerable enough to share it because it may inspire somebody else that's a huge victory. Thank you so much. Thank you. And once again, if you're new to our channel, please share your story. You don't have to be at the end of your journey. No way. You can be a week into this, a month into this, a year into this. Share your story. If you've gone down a pant size, if you've lost a pound, if you've like had to, been able to get off of arthritis medication or diabetes medication, it's all a success and we want you to share that story. Because we want to celebrate with you. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take one more commercial break and then we're gonna to get to the comments. Well, hello again. Okay, you ready for the comments? Yes, please. Okay, first one is from Kara and she's like, let's talk about vitamins. What are the most important ones that a person should take? I have a whole pill box uh, full and I just can't take them all every day anymore. I'm just wondering what I should be taking. 
That's a great question and we get it a lot because there are a lot of things out there and there are more and more things that are marketing to like, it's almost like chicken chicken soup for the for yeah. the whatever soul. Now there's like vitamins for the keto soul. Yeah. Now I want to say this. We are not doctors. No, we're not. We are not nurses. Okay. Now Dr. Barry does have a couple of videos about vitamins and things like that. But here's what you really need to do. You need to be getting as much of your vitamins and your nutrition from your food and from the sun. Get out in the sun. Get out in the sun, get out in the sun. I can't keep saying it. Get out in the sun and stop wearing suntan lotion. <laughs> Okay. And that was talked about during the summit this weekend. Yes. Stop wearing suntan lotion. Put on some zinc, you know, soak it up in some olive in some coconut oil if you want to put it on your skin, but don't wear the suntan lotion. You need that vitamin D. But as far as minerals and electrolytes, here's what you need. You need this. Now, this isn't everything you need. You're supposed to be taking a serving of this and then getting everything else from your food. The only thing you're gonna eat in addition to this is your sodium, which you're gonna salt your food, or you can use some of the fasting drops, the electrolyte drops, or just your Redmond salt. Like you're like sucking on these salt licks and stuff like that. But that's what you need. I will tell you this, we don't take any vitamins. No. None at all. The only thing we do is our electrolyte supplements. And that was not always the case. I had very expensive urine. I had very high priced pee because I was like, you know, once you hit 40, you're like, I'm supposed to have a giant medicine cabinet full of vitamins. And I bought everything, every kind of one a day for every type of situation that you could get. I was buying everything. Right. And it, was, it wasn't doing any good. I mean, I knew that something wasn't quite right when all you can do was see that you were peeing it out. Yeah, most of the vitamins that are out there on the market, your body can't even use them. They're getting them from no. like rocks and stuff. So technically, you know, they are what they say they are, but your body can't use them. Get it from your food. That's the best thing you can do. Next up, we have Shelly. The gorgeous and lovely Shelly Parker. This is good explanation on PhD. I eat just whole foods and never count anything. This to me is so much easier and better for mental aspects. Plus it's super yummy. So if you don't know what she's talking about, we talked about last week. The proper counting, human diet. Proper human diet. But we talked about counting calories and not counting calories. And you know, there's, there's different information out there. And the thing is, is no, you don't have to count calories if you're eating the proper human diet and you're only eating one or two meals a day. But you also have to get in touch with your satiety, which can be difficult because like Dr. Barry talked about this weekend, we've kind of messed it up. Yeah. You know, we don't know when we're full. So the only way you're gonna be able to fix that is eating very slowly or like Dr. Cywis talks about where you're eating sequentially. And we've gotten really good at that. Like put a small amount on your plate, go to another room, eat that when you're done, get up, go to the other room or go to the other side of the table or go to the other side of that room, get some more, put a little bit on your plate and that's going to give your body time to digest it and start going, Hey, I'm full, but don't just load up your plate because what happens is so many times we look at that plate and like, I have to clean my plate. I have like to that, clean it. It got ingrained to us when we were kids. We did it to our kids. You can't get up until you finish that plate, right? We are not in starvation mode. We will be able to have access to food later. I don't need to eat every single thing on my plate. And a non-scale victory for me last week was I had leftover food and I was you like- You left over an entire burger. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I am done. And that is two words- you know, three, I guess, I am done, that Joe not familiar with hearing coming out of my mouth. Like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I don't need to finish this. Next up, we have Jennifer. Hey, this Jennifer. one's for you. She said, are the lizards mean or just creepy? I'm loving your new adventures and I can't wait for the new channel. It's coming. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Lizards are not mean. I have not found a bunch of lizards to be mean. The iguanas that I really can't stand that are everywhere around they can us- bite. They can bite, but I find that most of the time they just like run away from you, which is great because I don't want them running towards us. I will say that when we've been camping so far, we're in Florida, only an hour away, 30 minutes away, three hours away. I haven't seen any iguanas. No, have you? No, not really. Rachel just doesn't like them. I just don't she like them. She just doesn't like them. Now, the iguanas are a major problem down here because they like burrow under bridges and They're things like native. that. They're not native. They're not native. They really are a nuisance and 
And some areas have even said it's okay to kill them on your own property because they really can cause a lot of damage. Some of them will even eat dogs and things like that. Dear so. Lord. Okay, you ready? Yes. Next one is from Jason. Hey, Jason. We Jason, love Jason. Jason said, MASH is one of my favorite shows. So many great episodes. Goodbye, Farewell, and Amen is by far the best finale of any series. Brother I from Another Mother. absolutely agree. It's your fave. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Next up is Valerie. Hey, Valerie. Valerie says, MASH was great, but Seinfeld reigns. Mr. Bookman, the marine biologist, Keith Hernandez, and Shrinkage. Shrinkage. I'm really sorry. I was in the pool! I was in the pool! <laughs> Next up, we have MJ. Hey, MJ Hawk. You would ask my fa their favorite recipes. She said, my favorite recipes of Joe's. I use too many of them for me to pick. Bless the first heart. ones that come to mind are cheeseburger casserole, avocado oil mayonnaise, pumpkin spice mug cake. Right now, I'm making your keto chow protein custard two to three times a wow. week. So good and very satisfying. I love you, MJ. Thank you for that. Yeah, the avocado oil mayonnaise is one of our favorite things because it is so quick. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to leave a link over Rachel's head because it's so easy to make. It's quick. It's cheap. And you're getting rid of those nasty canola oils and, and stuff. And sometimes the, the, the great mayonnaises that you purchase at the store, the totally keto-proof great mayonnaises made with fantastic ingredients are pricey. Like $10 of a jar. Very expensive. Yeah. Next up, we have Stephanie. Hey, Steph. She says, loved when you said, just get out and do something. We now have bikes. Not the one I want, but this one will work for now. I love that attitude. Starting tomorrow, plan on going early morning and late evening, and I got um, to work up to riding again. My legs about died yesterday. We also have plans in the near future to go kayaking, another new thing for us. And I have to call this week to check on horseback riding wow. at the Homestead Heritage Place up the road from us. Again, another new thing. Never rode a horse before, but James and I are determined to get more and um, an enjoyable activity in our lives. I love that. Yes, just start. And Steph, it, it is awesome listening to her and seeing her post about new experiences that she and her husband are doing. It is so nice. It is immediately date time. Getting yeah. out in nature, not having your, your hand on your phone. We're riding our bike together. We're discussing the day, our common interests. It feels like we're on a date. Next up, we have Garcia. Hey, Garcia. Garcia said you should try canned cod liver. Garcia. It's actually pretty good. I can only find it online now. I'm glad they can only find it online because we go shopping. Oh. Now, now you know somebody's going to send it to us. <laughs> now, if you don't know what that is, is we talked about it during the summit. Dr. Barry has kind of inspired us to try some of the different, you know, canned meats like sardines and things like that because they are really good. You, by the way, missed it. You were at church, but him and Kim Howardson were talking about potted meat being good for you. And then we need to get more into potted meats and things like that. So, but we're going to try it again, but yes. with mayonnaise and that kind of stuff added in. But yeah, so we've done that. If you Can haven't seen it. we put a ribeye on top of it? We have uh, episode one of what we're calling Keto Camping Fear Factor right up here. Where we're trying different things. We do have a second episode coming very shortly. And we just want to say that we are not, anybody that loves something that we hate, we're not making fun of it. I think that some people, it's like maybe connected to your childhood and you ate it and, and you think like we're, we're, you know, poof pooing on something that like was no, a part of- No, it's just our taste. It's just our taste. It's something new. And I'm really glad that we're doing it. We're finding things because, that we never knew we liked. Exactly. I would have never tried a sardine before we did this. And now I'm really glad that we did. You wouldn't have liked Spam. No. Now you actually, she asked for spam again. So I did. That's a good thing. So yeah, I mean, it's just like bugs, right? We think about like, ooh, I wouldn't eat bugs. But there's people in other countries that eat bugs on a daily basis. It's what you were raised with. And I challenge you to challenge yourself. To try something different. Try something new. Like liver or beef heart or kidney. You need to calm down. <laughs> Next up, we have Danny. Hey, Danny. Danny says, pickled sausage. Walmart carries Big Mama pickled sausages. They have an orange wrapper, hot and yellow wrapper. Sometimes you can uh, can find them in the checkout lanes or the aisle with the beef jerky stuff or on Amazon. So pickled turkey gizzards. Oh, Lord. She's got all kinds of like recommendations on Amazon, but they're expensive. Also, a brown called Keystone makes a canned beef. 
a ground beef, a pork, a chicken, and turkey, and the only ingredients are the meat and sea salt. So I find it at Kroger's. We need a Kroger's. And I think Walmart might also carry Keystone. We're going to have to check them out. We're going to have to look for that. Okay, next up, we have Tammy. Hey, Tammy. Tammy said, no pickled pig's lips. No. But I have had pickled pig's feet, and they are really good. We're going to... We're going to find them. We're going to pull the trigger on that. because I mean, even if it is a $10 investment, which is hard for me to be like, I don't know if I'm going to like that, and $10 is a lot of money, but like, we've got to try them at this point. Next up is Kuza. Hey, Kuza. Um, they say, question for anyone, any tips for how to stay keto when you deal with frequent illness and the reluctant lack of energy, which can often lead to some depression as well. I find the craving for sugar and carbs so strong during those periods and with little energy, it's just so easy to give in to the carby stuff that doesn't require any work to grab and eat. So I do well for a while. I've lost a significant amounts of weight two different times at this point over the course of the last 10 years with keto, but I just haven't been able to maintain so far. Full on keto is always my goal, but I fall short so uh, much too often. Okay. I don't want to come off cold with us, but some of it comes down to just do it. Rachel talked about it earlier. There is never, ever, ever going to be a perfect time no. to change your eating lifestyle. And that's whether you're going to the proper human diet or you're going to plant-based whole food or you're going to veganism or vegetarianism, whatever it is, there's never going to be a perfect time. There's always going to be an obstacle. And some of that obstacle is our brain going, now's not a good time. Why? Because we're to. all addicts. Yeah. We're all addicts and we don't want to give up like what we love. So our body is going to convince us like you can't. Now's not a good time. You are sick. Now, if you want some tips of things you can do, first of all, the electrolyte should help you get through some of that sluggishness. Making sure you're getting enough salt, enough potassium, enough magnesium. Use the daily mineral drops. Another thing you can do, you need something to snack on, have some of this ready to go in your flavor. refrigerator. Not that Not this flavor. Okay. Hey, we just finished the proper human diet. We have a bunch of sample stuff laying around us. By the way, everything that you saw, when you saw us talk about the sponsors, we believe in all of this stuff. This, Obviously. They didn't send us this stuff <laughs> no. for the summit. This is in our pantry. Right. So have some keto chow. You know, there's a link down below. We can give you 10% off or get you 10% off. But if you have that made now, you want an ice cream? Go grab a keto chow. Have a milkshake. You know, may it, it may put you over your calories or the amount of fat for the day, but it's better than going off of keto. We don't advocate eating a ton of it, but have some keto-ready snacks. Go buy some hard-boiled eggs. I went to Sam's Club last night, and I buy an entire box. This is something we started doing about a month ago. We buy the ready-cooked, ready-peeled, hard-boiled eggs. eggs. Yes, that's Are they a lot. pasture-raised? No, but you know what? When you want to grab something, Rachel came it's home done. from church today, and she was like, hey, I know I got to be back on the Proper Human Diet Summit in 20 minutes, but I haven't eaten, and I've been up since 5 o'clock. She grabbed four hard-boiled eggs out of the refrigerator done. and just ate those. And it was just done, and I didn't grab a snack. Yeah, so having those kind of things ready. Get yourself a couple of fat snack cookies. Don't put them in front of you. Put them away where you have to like get up, go find them in the back of the closet. That's going to make you like think about your actions before you actually do but get a few of those kind of things. Some of the better ones. Look at the ingredients. Judge the ingredients. Like we use cereal school. We use the cereal school, the schoolyard snacks, cheese puffs, where they've got really good ingredients and they've got very low total carbs. Don't get something that's got like 35 total carbs and two net carbs. That's not going to help you. I'll tell you what else has helped me too because I struggle with the same exact situation is – I've been watching a lot of Dr. Cywis mm -hmm. and dealing with some of the behavioral side of like why I'm choosing things because of my carb addiction. I've got to replace some of my behavior with other activities. Right. So, you know, going for a bike ride when I'm like, I really want a snack and I'm going on a bike ride. That doesn't seem like a logical switch one out for the other. But he talks a lot about how we've got to fill our time with something different. And like when we need an emotional release we really need to like find something more constructive to do with it. We are guilty of this. Everybody says, so oh, guilty. you guys are so great. You lost 200 pounds between the two of you. And I've seen your pictures, which by the way, if you're new to our channel and haven't seen our story video, I'm going to leave a link over Rachel's head. Go watch it. But we're not perfect. No. And something that 
I've even caught us saying on camera, something that we do all the time, I deserve that. Yep. Right? I worked hard. And we said it during our camping video that we just released yesterday of we had to move our campsite from one side of the street to the other. And it took an hour and a half out of our vacation to move our thing. And what did we say? We worked hard today. We're camping. We're on vacation. We deserve ice cream. We we are carb addicts. Right. We are addicts. So like, please never think that we think we have all of the answers. We are living this life one day at a time too. So we are right there with you. Like we struggle with the same things and we are, you know, when we know better, we try to do better, but it is a, it's a daily struggle. You right. know? Now we're not even saying the ice cream is wrong or that we shouldn't have had the ice cream, but it shouldn't link those two together. We shouldn't have used not just for the camera, but we've said even in our own daily life and we do it on a regular basis, we should not have said, you know what? I worked hard. So I deserve instead just say, you know what? I would like some ice cream today. And at the same time, we don't want to say like, I've been bad for a while. I need to go on a, a long fast because I need to punish myself for eating. Right. Because what happens is this, we do this, I deserve, right? Hey, I lost 10 pounds. So I deserve to have a cheat meal or I worked really hard today. I deserve to have this. So we're, we're now we're mentally doing this thing where we're rewarding ourselves with food because we're all food addicts. But now what happens as soon as, and I know this happens to us because we usually do keto chow ice cream. We don't do a lot of pints of ice cream because I can get three times the volume with keto chow right. and get lower carbs and everything else. You know what happened? As soon as I finished eating a pint of ice cream, I was like, I just ate 56 grams of total carbs. Now that may have been six net carbs, but it was 56 grams of total carbs. And you felt bloated. Now I want to beat myself up. I want to go purge. I want to go on a diet. I want to like not eat for a week. So now what are we doing? We're going back to the binge and purge mentality. So if you wanted some ice cream, have some ice cream, but don't link it to those terms. And that is something that we said to ourselves yesterday. We're not going to do it. Or at least we're going to try not to do that. Yeah, it's a, but it's a daily chore. It's a daily chore. Okay, next up we have Angela. Hey, Angela. Angela said, hello, keto family. So I have a strange dilemma, which has me confused. I reached my weight goals and I've now been gaining weight. My measurements have been more or less the same, but my scale has gradually increasing. My clothes fit fine. My blood sugar is where it always was between 75 and 85, sometimes less if I fast. And my ketones are there. I walk every day and I lift light weights three times a week to help with my bones. I'm 49. I don't count calories. And since I eat once, maybe twice a day on occasion, I set the proper human diet. And once in a while, I cheat with a dessert of keto chow or a flavored collagen. I make these ahead of time with beef gelatin and split it into this bag, two servings. I also add a bit of sour cream on top. I feel no desire to eat until after 19 to 24 hours, sometimes more. I hope you have some ideas because all I can think of is that I may be putting on muscle, but I'm not a serious weightlifter for that to be the case. Thank you both for all of you do. Uh, and I am able to not feel like an outcast because of my diet. Aww. The best that has happened in my kids don't ask for soda anymore. Thanks to the AHA and the LaCroix and my husband, ahas. Uh, and my husband tries to eat low carb and only once or twice a day. That is awesome. Okay. So here's a few things that it could be, Angela. I, I obviously, like I said, we're not doctors or nurses or anything mm -hmm. like that. I'm curious when you hit your maintenance, did you start eating a lot more? Because I think that is a, a problem that some people have. And it's something that I did. I think it's something that Rachel did is we were heavy calorie restrictors before like really seeing the you know proper human diet thing and the way Dr. Barry and Dr. Cyrus talk. But if you are a serious calorie restrictor and then you hit your maintenance weight or your goal weight, and then all of a sudden you double and triple your calories, okay. you're probably going to put on a little bit of weight. Why? You've slowed down your metabolism, which is one of the reasons that Dr. Barry advocates not counting calories, but you've slowed down your metabolism and now your body is like, oh, I've got this extra stuff. I better store because I don't know when I'm going to get this extra stuff again. Right. So your body may start storing a little bit until it gets ready and then it'll kind of even off. Now, if that's not the case, 
like Dr. Barry talked about, if you are eating the proper human diet and you are only eating the correct foods, one to two meals max a day and no snacking in between, he has said, even on one of our videos, he came on and said, will you gain weight? There's a possibility. Are you gaining fat? No, you're probably gaining muscle and bone density, especially yeah. if you're doing some weightlifting and stuff. So and if you're seeing it gradual, that's the thing that it just happens over time. And you right. may think, well, I'm not, you know, goody beads. I'm not like a bodybuilder. Right. But it's still, it's happening. Now, it is possible to overeat on the proper human diet, even if you're only eating one or two meals a day. I mean, like I said, if you have been calorie restricting for a long time, immediately switching to an all-you-can-eat buffet, and that's something that Dr. Barry talked about this week, could have some negative impacts. You have to kind of been do there. it slowly. But if, if you were calorie restricting before, here's what I would tell you to do. Go back to eating a little bit less food, kind of more of where you were when you were trying to lose weight. Then slowly add food back in. Like, you know, increase like 50 to 100 calories per week. Don't go from eating, you know, one steak a day to six steaks a day. Yeah. Because that is that could be it's the shock. problem. It's a shock to your body. But I would look... Give yourself some time. Look over time and see what happens that way. Next up, we have Jessic. Hey, Jessic. Uh, they say, I'd love some opinions. My husband and I are looking to get a Sam's Club or Costco membership, which is better for keto items, both selections and price-wise. The closest ones are both about an hour and a half away and don't necessarily want to get two memberships. Thanks in advance. For So first of all, what I would say is reach out to both of those warehouses and say, hey, would you let me shop here for the next 30 days? Because you may have, I mean, we can give our advice, but you may find that you like one company's products more than the other because right. a lot of them sell their own like Costco brand or, you know, for Sam's Club is like Maker's Mark brand. So you may like one over the other. Right. Now, here's what I'm going to say on this. We have all three memberships. We have a Costco, a BJ's, and a Sam's Club membership because we share them with my mom and sister. Costco has the best options in our experience when it comes to keto-friendly, mostly snack items. Right. And things like almond flour, macadamia nuts, cheese crisps, dips. anything else you could think of. I think dips. There's dips, like those kind of things. Some sausages sometimes. Yeah. Now, if you're looking for the meat options, if you're looking for the cheapest meats, that's going to be Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. Sam's Club seems to have the best deals on that. Like we went in and you Bulk. can buy a 10 pound tub or log Chub, of ground beef for 20 bucks. Um, sour cream, like $2.80 for a big tub. Uh, heavy cream, it's like $3 for a quart of heavy cream. So... They have their pluses and minuses. If you're looking for like just keto products, Costco was probably your better option. But again, it depends on your area. BJ's has much better uh, fresh fruits and vegetables and things like that. Yeah. As well as we've recently discovered their deli counter. They have an amazing deli counter. Yes, I was super surprised by that. Also, I think that they have better um, like drink options. Like if you're trying to get LaCroix, or, you know, um, different, the, the infused water things. Yeah. I feel like they sell them in bulk for way cheaper. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it just depends. But like Rachel said, I would go to all three. If you have all three near you, ask them for a seven day or a 30 day pass and try it that way. Also, you can go online and a lot of times there's Groupons for like a free 30 day pass or something like that. Okay. Next up we have Trisha. Hey, Trisha. Trisha said, I have a question for those who were keto and stopped and have gone back on. Did you have more trouble starting back up with weight loss? I didn't have a lot to lose, 35 pounds, and I lost it really over six months. I was then more low carb for the next six months and maintained uh, without any gain. Then COVID hit. I'm an ER nurse, and I stress and a plethora of food delivered, thank you, was for all carbs. I only gained about 12 pounds back, but I am back on the wagon, and I feel like nothing is happening. I haven't lost a pound. I have terrible heartburn and I haven't reached a lovely keto high where I felt amazing. I clearly was successful the first time around and it's because I don't have much to lose this time. Any suggestions would be helpful. Yeah, that's tough because, you know, it was the same way for us. When you first started keto, you we lost a lot of weight, but we had a lot of weight to lose. Right. So when you have less to lose, I always feel like that that last 10 pounds is like the real struggle, right? right. 
Well, I think one of the things is, is and this is one of the reasons we always tell people, do not cheat off the keto. If you need to cheat, have a cheat in calories, like way overeat, or even just go have a keto ice cream or something like that, but don't go eat a pint of Breyers ice cream or a pint of hog. Hard to go back. Don't eat a bag of potatoes. Why? We're addicts. It's one of the reasons Dr. Cywis doesn't even like keto ice cream. He doesn't like keto brownies because it triggers our addiction. The problem is, is sometimes when we go off and we come back, we find it harder to stick to it because we got that taste of it. One of the reasons that I never had a cheat meal is I don't trust myself. I don't, one of my favorite things pre-keto was just butter, bread, and cheese, right? I would, Rachel will tell you, I would like get a loaf of bread, especially like that Outback, the Outback bread. I would like slather it with butter and then put cheese on top of it and eat it as a sandwich. Yeah. And I loved bread. So I've never allowed myself to have that bread because I'm afraid that it would trigger me to want to eat a bunch of bread again. Right. I'm not going back. <laughs> so it's that is part of the issue sometimes. But the bottom line, like Rachel said earlier, we just have to do it. Also, look at like some of the talks. If you're able to watch this Proper Human Diet Summit this past weekend, like Nurse Sydney talked about, she was on a stall for eight. 18 months. That's a long stall. That is a frustrating time. But look at everything else that is happening in your body. Maybe you're not losing the weight yet. Maybe your body's got to reset a little bit, but are you feeling better? Are you are you less lethargic than you were before? It's going to take some time, but don't give up on it. Last one is from Shanta. Hey, Shanta. She says, I'm pre-diabetic and this month was get my life together month. And on two different days, I had a fasted blood glucose at 125 and 127, which is high and scary. Um, I haven't had numbers that high fasted, but those two days, this is a sure sign that if I don't get things in order, I'm going to be closer to being diabetic. I've worked out in some way for every day so far in September and ate healthy keto foods. I have to keep going, trying to keep a simple, basic menu um, and pray. I keep going. Wish me luck. I surely need it because I've been struggling to stay on track this year. I think that's the theme of 2020 is- Stay on track. Stay on track and just keep going. I, that's what I want to say. First of all, I want to say congratulations, Shanta, on keeping going because yes. that's the most important it part. Is. You have to stick with it. We have to stick with it. You know, if you look at like bumps in the road, you may hit little bumps, but look long term. Look long term. That's the most important thing. Now, as far as your glucose, I know this is going to sound weird. I wouldn't worry about it too much. These are things that used to really, really concern me. And it'd be interesting to know what was happening when you stuck yourself, okay? Because you're talking about you were fasted. When did you take that measurement? Did you take it when you got up in the morning? Because your glucose will go up in the morning just from the dawn phenomenon. Like somewhere around nine o'clock in the morning, your insulin, your glucose is going to be at the highest, even fasted. One of the reasons that I got this, the CGM, is because I was finger sticking myself 24 hours fasted and finding my glucose in the high 90s and I used to be in like the low 80s. And I'm like, what is going on? How How is my glucose high? And I asked Dr. Barry about it and he was like, I would not worry about it at all. Look at the time you're sticking yourself. Your body creates glucose all the time. Like the CGM has taught me, like my glucose goes up when I get up to go to the bathroom. How old do you feel when that happens? I know, right? I've actually, you can actually increase your glucose just by the thought of sticking yourself. You don't like needle pricks and you start developing that fear. Yeah. And as you're pricking yourself, you can increase your glucose. I, Rachel mentioned it today on, on the Proper Human Diet Summit. My glucose goes up when I know she's walking through the door. How cute is that? Is that, I mean, it's awesome, but, but it's I happening. didn't eat, nothing triggered it, it other than a happy emotion triggered it. Being scared triggered it. Being so sleepy. If you're really concerned about it, here's what I would do. I would get a CGM. Yes. If you could at all possible get a CGM, go to your doctor. If your doctor doesn't want to give you one, say, hey, listen, I've had times in my life where my blood glucose was too high. Give it to me. And if he says no, this is what Dr. Barry told me to say to my doctor. Fortunately, I went to Dr. Cywis. But he said, tell your doctor, you know what? You don't want to give it to me? Fine. I want you to notate in my medical records that I've had high glucose in the past and you refuse to give me a CGM so that I can make sure I don't become a diabetic. And he said, watch how fast they're going to give they're you that CGM They're going to write that prescription. prescription. And if you don't have, if it's not covered under insurance, 
Get the Freestyle. The Freestyle is very inexpensive. I mean, this one is very expensive, but the Freestyle is gonna tell you what you need and you'll be able to get that data and see what's going on. But if you're fasted, don't worry about it. Look long term. 125 is not that bad. I mean, obviously, I know you want it lower, but I wouldn't be freaking out. Freaking out is just going to make it go higher. Yeah. Also, like you learned this weekend, if you were watching the proper human diet, like not getting sleep can actually increase your glucose and it can even make you diabetic. I mean, Dr. Barry was talking about like five hours, less than five hours sleep, you can turn yourself diabetic. Well, and it makes sense too because so much stuff goes on, right, with that. Like I will, I haven't had a lot of sleep, you know, this week just because we've been, you know, getting prepared for stuff and doing things with church and just there's not enough hours in the day to get everything done. And I all of a sudden retain a bunch of water, like all kinds of things happen when you don't get sleep. It doesn't seem like it should be connected. Like what the heck does that have to do with, with anything? But it does. It affects sleep affects everything. Yeah. Tabitha is in here telling us that it's time to finish keto on the couch. It is. So with that being said, we thank all of you for joining us. If you like seeing videos like this, check out our entire playlist of keto on the couch, which you're going to find right down there over here. Over there. <laughs> if you want to see our make most recent video, check out the video right down here. But whether you go check out this or check out this, make sure to check out this. <laughs> Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. Bye.